Picture this, it's a crisp autumn evening in 1964. The air is thick with anticipation as you settle into your favorite armchair, the glow of the television casting a warm, flickering spell across the room. Your heart races as the screen comes to life, and the iconic theme music of Peyton Place fills the airwaves, luring you into a world of scandal, secrets, and seduction. As the drama unfolds, you find yourself transported to the fictional New England town, where the seemingly tranquil facade conceals a web of entangled lives and untold mysteries. You can't help but be drawn into the lives of the complex characters, each harboring their own dark secrets and the unforgettable moments that keep you perched on the edge of your seat. Perhaps it was your first glimpse of the fiery Allison McKenzie or the enigmatic charm of Dr. Michael Rossi that etched a lasting memory in your mind. Or maybe it was the shocking revelations that left you gasping for breath, realizing that behind the facade of this picturesque town lay a multitude of hidden desires and buried truths. But now, let's delve into some intriguing facts about this classic TV series that captivated audiences across the nation. From behind-the-scenes scandals to the impact it had on American television, Peyton Place holds a special place in the annals of television history. So, join us as we uncover the secrets of Peyton Place, a show that left an indelible mark on the hearts of its viewers, and discover why, even decades later, its allure remains undiminished. In 1964, the TV series Peyton Place created quite a buzz. While there's not much information about Barbara Parkins meeting Betty Davis, it's worth noting that Davis allegedly asked Parkins, when are you going to let go of Rodney Harrington? This likely speaks to the popularity of the character Rodney Harrington in the show. Interestingly, the original plan of the writers was to have Constance kill Elliot after just a couple of episodes, followed by a dramatic murder trial. However, the character of Elliot turned out to be quite beloved among the viewers, leading to the abandonment of this initial plan. Another intriguing tidbit is that during the show's run, Barbara Parkins, who played the character Betty Anderson, gained immense popularity. There were even discussions about a potential spin-off series called The Girl from Peyton Place specially developed for her. Ultimately, though, this idea was scrapped, perhaps due to various factors that influenced the decision. These facts shed light on the dynamics and unexpected developments within the 1964 TV series Paid in Place, adding depth to its history and the impact it had on its audience. In the 1964 TV series Paid in Place, there's an intriguing behind-the-scenes fact involving actor Warner Anderson. Anderson played the character Matthew Swain during the first season but ceased appearing on screen afterward. However, he continued to be part of the show as the uncredited narrator at the start of each episode until the series' cancellation. This behind-the-scenes role showcased his voice talent, even though it went unrecognized on screen. Another interesting tidbit about the show involves the character Selena Cross. Initially, Jill Rowland was cast to play Selena, a character who, in the novel the series is based on, killed her sexually abusive stepfather. However, during pre-production, ABC executives demanded that this storyline be omitted from the series. As a result, Jill Rowland was dropped from the cast, leading to significant changes in Selena's character arc. Lastly, there was some drama behind the scenes involving actress Dorothy Malone. She portrayed a prominent role but complained that her character was being overshadowed by her co-star, Mia Farrow. In 1968, she was written off the show, and she sued 20th Century Fox for breach of contract. The case was eventually settled out of court, marking a notable episode in the series' history. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the dynamics and challenges faced during the production of Peyton Place, a show that left its mark on television history. Vision history. Vision history. Peyton Place, behind-the-scenes stories Gina Rollins, a star of the 1964 TV series Peyton Place, had an unusual request on set. She ordered a cigar ban, explaining that being around cigars made her feel queasy, even turning green. This quirky detail sheds light on the idiosyncrasies of the actors behind the scenes. Christopher Connolly, another actor in the series, didn't audition for his role as Norman Harrington. Instead, he stumbled into it while helping a girl with her screen test. Although the girl didn't impress the show's producer, Paul Monash, Connolly caught his attention and landed the part. This anecdote highlights the serendipitous nature of casting decisions in the entertainment industry. In contrast, Ruth Warwick, who played Hannah Cord in the series, expressed her discontent working with Ryan O'Neill. 
She didn't mince words, calling him someone who is so in love with himself that it is pitiful. This behind-the-scenes drama adds a touch of tension to the production of Peyton Place. These backstage stories offer a glimpse into the human side of the iconic 1964 TV series, revealing the quirks, coincidences, and conflicts that shaped the show. Sometimes, what happens off-camera can be just as intriguing as what unfolds on screen. During the 1964 TV series Peyton Place, a few intriguing facts stand out. One notable detail is that in late 1965, actress Dorothy Malone, who played Constance McKenzie, only had to be on set for two days a week. Malone herself remarked on this saying, I've never worked so little or had such an easy job. Another interesting aspect of the show is that during its five-year network run, all episodes were original. Unlike many primetime series, ABC never aired repeats during the summer. Mia Farrow, who portrayed Allison McKenzie, never expected the series to be successful. In fact, she tried to get out of her contract shortly after the show aired. It took two years, but her then-husband Frank Sinatra used his industry influence to have her released from her ABC contract. In a twist of fate, the show's writers wrote Allison out of the storyline by having her run away from town. Interestingly, in 1968, the series introduced a plotline in which a new character claimed to have given birth to Allison's child. This happened right after the release of Rosemary's Baby. These intriguing tidbits shed light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics and unexpected turns in the world of Peyton Place, making it a show with its own share of drama off-screen, 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 off-screen. In 1964, the TV series Peyton Place made its debut, and it quickly became a sensation. However, behind the scenes, there were some interesting facts that added to its drama. In a 1969 interview, Ed Nelson, one of the original cast members, revealed a surprising secret. Almost the entire original cast initially had low expectations for the show's success. This unexpected lack of confidence from the actors stands in contrast to the show's eventual popularity. Rumors about the show's cancellation began circulating in 1968, causing fans to protest widely. Actress Barbara Rush disclosed that despite the outcry, the network didn't pay much attention to the protest mail. This highlights the disconnect between fan support and network decisions. The character Betty Anderson, portrayed by Barbara Parkins, almost met a tragic end in the 11th episode of the series. The producers had initially planned for her to die in a car accident. However, due to Barbara Parkins' rising popularity, they ultimately chose not to go forward with this storyline. This decision likely had a significant impact on the show's direction and character development. Intriguingly, these behind-the-scenes details shed light on the dynamics of Peyton Place, a show that captured the hearts of many despite the initial doubts of its cast members and the network's indifference to fan protests. These facts offer a glimpse into the complexities of television production during that era. In the 1964 TV series Peyton Place, there's an interesting fact about Joyce Gilson. She was brought in as a replacement for Mia Farrow and Lee Taylor Young. The press expected her to rise to fame like her predecessors, but that never happened. During the show's peak, Christopher Connolly, one of the actors, received approximately 400 fan letters every week. This highlights the immense popularity of the show during its heyday. Interestingly, before the series officially began in 1964, an hour-long pilot episode was produced in 1962. This pilot included a storyline featuring the Cross family, which is described in the novel upon which the series is based. However, producer Erna Phillips decided to scrap the Cross family storyline, ultimately shaping the direction of the show. And there you have it, some fascinating tidbits about the 1964 TV series Peyton Place. It's a series that had its share of behind-the-scenes decisions and unexpected developments. 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 Barbara Rush, known for her role in the 1964 TV series Peyton Place, had a notably positive perspective on her time working on the show. She described it as an actor's paradise, highlighting her appreciation for the opportunity to infuse her own personality into her character and the flexible work schedule. Ed Nelson, another actor from the series, once singled out Frank Ferguson, George McCready, and Tim O'Connor as delivering some of the finest acting performances on the show. Their contributions clearly left a lasting impression on him. 
Ryan O'Neill, who was part of the Peyton Place cast, made a surprising claim that some of the babies who appeared in the series were sedated to keep them from crying during their scenes. This revelation sheds light on the behind-the-scenes efforts to maintain a smooth production. These insights offer a glimpse into the experiences and opinions of key figures involved in Peyton Place, providing valuable context for fans and enthusiasts of this iconic 1964 TV series. As we draw the curtains on this journey through the enchanting world of the 1964 TV series, Peyton Place, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the tapestry of emotions it wove into the hearts of its viewers. This iconic show, with its riveting tales of love, betrayal, and secrets hidden beneath the facade of a picturesque town, has left an indelible mark on the annals of television history. Perhaps, in those moments of suspense, you found yourself holding your breath, your own secrets and desires mirroring those of the characters on screen. Maybe you laughed, cried, or even gasped in shock as the plot lines unfolded, revealing the intricate web of relationships that define Peyton Place. Now, I encourage you to share your treasured memories and profound thoughts about this series. Did you find solace in its drama during a challenging time in your life? Or did it spark conversations and connections with loved ones? Whether you admired the resilience of Allison or the complexity of Constance, your perspective is a vital thread in the rich tapestry of Peyton Place's legacy. Your voice adds depth to the narrative, and your reminiscences breathe life into the characters who once graced our screens. So, please, take a moment to share your favorite memories or reflections, and let's keep the spirit of Peyton Place alive in our hearts. Thank you for joining me on this nostalgic journey, and for your time and interest in this timeless classic. Together, we celebrate the enduring magic of Peyton Place. 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 place.